The other day I was cutting up a pallet working on a project for a video. And then my saw stopped working. No spin, no nothing. Just the haunting smell of a burned out motor. Now, here's where we get to today's dilemma. I got these nice new DeWalt tools, but I still have these big old Harbor Freight batteries that still work just fine. Batteries are batteries, right? Why shouldn't I be able to mix and match? The pins look exactly the same, the voltage is the same. In theory, it's just a geometry issue. The shape is just a little bit different. So if I can get this to work, I can get the extended battery life out of the big old Harbor Freight batteries that I already have without needing to buy the equivalent giant DeWalt ones for like $120. I can just keep getting these for $40. First thing I gotta do is remove some material that's keeping this thing from sliding all the way in. This little ledge has gotta get shaved down quite a bit to match the DeWalt. So, once I've made some measurements and marked some cuts, I'm ready to crack this thing open and start breaking stuff. So does it fit now? Well, almost. About a quarter inch off. These little shoulders by the contacts are still blocking it. So we've got more stuff to cut. And it fits perfectly. I've heard a lot of these brands are actually based in the same factories, which is why these are so similar. Now all that's left is to put it back together and give it a test run. I'm not going to try it on the saw just in case something goes wrong and it fries it. Uh, I'm going to try it on a drill since I've already got other drills around. Here goes. Oh. There's a light. No power. Let's just double check that it does work with the DeWalt. Yep. And even though this goes all the way in and makes contact, Nothing. Since there is a little light coming on, I know I'm making contact and there's power going in, but there must be some other chip in there that's letting it know that something is wrong. But that's okay. We have another method to try. I've seen these janky looking third-party battery adapters floating around online, so I figured I'd pick one up and see how these things actually work. So I paid 20 bucks for this thing. It's basically just a 3D printed part with some little components in there, the pins, the screws, and a little spring. I could use this as is, but I wanna crack it open and see if this will give me any extra information on how to modify my batteries. Because if I can avoid having this extra bulky piece attached to my power tool, uh, that would be ideal. So it's time to see what this thing is actually doing on the inside. As I expected, there is a little circuit board inside with a couple resistors on it, so I would have to make some electrical modifications to turn the power into a DeWalt battery. So if I'm going to be using this adapter, I want to fix this locking switch. Because the part was 3D printed, it's got layer lines which make it stick all the time. The solution is pretty simple but tedious. I just have to sand down all those layer lines so it's smooth. After about 15 minutes of sanding every surface I could reach, I went for something stronger. Acetone will soften and dissolve most 3D printing materials, so by sticking the part in an acetone bath, I can hopefully smooth all those layer lines down more than I could with just sanding. Now, is all this effort worth it to save a little bit of money and reuse some old batteries? Well, debatable. But little afternoon projects like this are what it's all about for me. Cracking something open, figuring out how it works, trying different things, failing, retrying a different method, and just keep going until you have something. In the end, I have a product that's uniquely mine that I've seen inside and out that I know entirely how it works. And that's something you can't just buy. It's sort of an exercise in maintaining childhood curiosity in a way. As a kid, you're always asking, why, 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 why? Well, you want to know how everything works. And as adults, I feel like 
it's easier to lose that and feel like you've got it figured out. But why do we stop asking those why questions? When I was a kid, I would find screwdrivers and take things apart all the time. And I didn't necessarily have the skills to be able to put them back together. I specifically remember taking apart a kitchen timer once and then just leaving it in pieces. And my mom was a little mad at me about that. And that's basically the same thing that I'm doing here, except with power tools and acetone and chemicals that I couldn't use when I was a kid. Why can't this battery go with this tool? Well, the geometry doesn't line up. Well, let's make it line up with a Dremel. And then, well, it still doesn't work. Why not? Well, there's a little bit of an electrical difference. Well, let's try this adapter. Well, the adapter doesn't work because of some layer lines. Well, let's fix that with sanding. Well, the sanding doesn't take care of all of it. Let's melt it with chemicals. I'm just talking as I'm waiting for the acetone to smooth this out. I'm sort of stretching away from our original topic here, but I feel like our schooling system sort of kills that childhood love of learning. Humans are like inherently experimental people. It's what, like we make tools, we make fire, we, we figure that stuff out. And it, it's our nature, but I think once we get through, you know, 16 years of school or whatever's normal, you're just kind of burned out on it and conditioned to think this is a means to an end. I have to do this to get a career and then thank God I don't have to learn anymore. And that's a, a little dramatic of an interpretation of that, but like you sort of see the same thing with reading. Like a lot of people I know are getting back into reading physical books and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot this was fun. Like when you don't have to write a book report on it or an essay or be over analyzing every chapter instead of just immersing yourself in the book. Like it's actually fun when you don't have to worry about those things. So that's what these little afternoon projects are about. Just being unapologetically experimental, trying things just to learn from them. Um, because at the end of the day, I spent money and time on this. I could have just bought the battery, but I wouldn't have learned anything, would I? Now that the thing is all back together and functional, I think a bit of rebranding is in order. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might be wondering, you usually remove logos from things. Why are you adding one back on? Well, it's sort of funny to me, all these different names on products that are all essentially the same. These brands have slightly altered the design so the products aren't interchangeable. But in the end, the Bauer battery becomes a DeWalt battery just required some experimentation.